Waiting for the answers to the universe Waiting for someone to wake me up Tell me that this is all just a dream I'm still waiting Waiting for a different sign Inhaled corticosteroids and thrush in individuals who take inhaled corticosteroids, or ICS, an important teaching tip is to wash the mouth out after using the ICS. If they don't do this, there's increased risk for them to develop thrush. This is a very important teaching tip for patients after showing them how to use the ICS. And also important info tip to teach them and remind them on a regular basis. Albuterol and potassium. Albuterol is sometimes used to treat hyperkalemia, or high potassium. It helps to lower the potassium. So, it is important to realize that individuals who are receiving frequent breathing treatments, let's say they have a COPD exacerbation or an asthma exacerbation, and they're in the hospital, they may actually develop hypokalemia, or low potassium. And so, these individuals may need a little bit more frequent monitoring of their chemistry panel. It's also important to recognize signs and symptoms of low potassium. Asthma triggers. Common asthma triggers include exercise, pollen, stress, mold, humidity, dust, smoke, pets, fire pits, and other respiratory viruses. These can all trigger asthma exacerbations. It's important to educate the patient or and or parent about these risk factors. You may get a test question that says something along the lines of, identify the statement below that indicates that the patient has a correct understanding about asthma triggers. Croup. Croup is a viral illness that can cause respiratory distress in children. The croup cough is characterized by a barky seal-like sound. Upon imaging, a steeple sign is often seen. Croup can cause swelling around the voice box, windpipe, and bronchial tubes, and it also can lead to stridor. Beta blockers. Beta blockers, it's important to know that this medication class can cause bronchospasms in individuals who have asthma and or COPD. In real life, you will sometimes see patients on a beta blocker who do have one of these conditions, but it's very important to recognize that if they're just recently started on one of these medications and they all of a sudden start having a flare of their asthma and or COPD, that the beta blocker may actually be the cause. Samter's triad. Know the Samter's triad. This triad is characterized by an individual who has asthma, nasal polyps, and an aspirin intolerance. If an individual has asthma and also nasal polyps, it is likely that they will also have an allergy to aspirin. CO2 levels. Individuals who have COPD often live with higher CO2 levels. However, in individuals without COPD, higher levels of CO2 in the body can actually cause them to become very sleepy and actually cause them to go into respiratory failure. Suctioning. When suctioning a patient, this should not take any longer than 10 to 15 seconds at a time. Any longer than that can cause respiratory distress in the patient. Typically, you want to give the patient anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute in between suctioning to allow them some time to rest before you do it again. Suctioning helps prevent mucus plugs from blocking the airway. Reasons that you may want to suction, if you feel that the patient is getting really rattly, um, if they are having increased respiratory rate, or they just tell you that they're having a hard time and you know that they have excess secretions, it might be a good idea. Pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism should be suspected in patients who develop sudden shortness of breath, leg pain, chest pain, coughing, and have risk factors such as a recent road trip, airplane flight, on oral contraceptives, history of cancer, recent surgery, or prolonged bed rest. Pulmonary embolism imaging. Individuals who have renal failure typically need a VQ scan over a CT angio with contrast.
pulse oximeter readings. Know that if a patient's pulse oximeter reading is less than 92%, it is likely that some type of intervention needs to be taken. This is especially the case if the patient is running under 90%. Now, certain patients, depending on what their respiratory condition is, whether it's chronic or acute, they may run a little bit lower, but they may also need oxygen at that time. Um, some COPD patients do run anywhere from 91 to 95% on a normal basis. And so it's just important to recognize, is the patient, number one, are they in distress? Are they showing any signs that they're having a difficult time breathing? You definitely want to auscultate their lungs. Sometimes after patients cough they and clear their lungs, then all of a sudden their O2 will come up. But look and try to determine if the patient is having any other signs like cyanosis, strider, or if they just seem like they're in a panic, or they just feel like something's going to happen, if they're tachycardic, and also look at their other vital signs as well. Um, sometimes it could be that their fingers are cold, so you may need to try another place on the body. It could be that they're wearing nail polish. So it's important to take these things into consideration, but know that some sort of intervention needs to be taken, even if that intervention means that you just need to find another place to take their pulse oximetry reading. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, it lets us know to make more. And also check out some of our other videos. Until next time, guys.